Here's the head ball pitch. All right. Hey, good morning. I'd like to uh, open up just by congratulating Ethan Downs on being named to the All-State AFCA uh, Good Works team for his tremendous community service. And he's only representative from the, the Big 12 Conference and one of 11 um, players in the country that, to receive this honor. So great job, Ethan. Uh, wonderful um, uh, honor. So I'd like to open it up uh, for questions. Brent, I just wanted to ask you about uh, Danny Stutzman. Uh, you know, through I think he leads the team in tackles through two weeks. He had 17 on Saturday. Maybe just compared to where he was through two weeks, you know, last year. Maybe where have you seen him grow the most on the field? Yeah, probably his confidence. Um, he's playing at a in a confident way. He's able to have a different level of anticipation uh, because of his knowledge. You know, Again, just being another year in the system, he's a lot more comfortable. He's able to lead. He's not, you know, um, in the back. He's in the front. So last year, David Awebu was probably our our leader there, and um, so he's taken those reins, his leadership and confidence. Bob. Yeah, Brent, we know a lot of the players have mentioned second year in the system, second year in the system, but what else is it about Key Lawrence that's different? I think, you know, he's he's not worried about external factors. And I was just worried about uh, being a great teammate, doing his job, playing at a high level, uh, letting the game come to him. Uh, you know, he's playing aggressively. And just playing with a lot of confidence, I think he's having some fun. I don't want to speak for him on every one of those, but if I was, I'm around him every day, uh, you know, in the back seven meeting and certainly on the practice field. So that's what I see. Brent, you spoke last week about that there's got to be a future at quarterback beyond this season. And in that context, when you're talking about developing Jackson more than just the appearances he's making now, what are you hoping he gets out of that playing time? and? Is it safe to assume that a red shirt's not in the picture if he's going to be out there like that? Yeah, I mean, he's our number two quarterback. I don't see any reason we would want to red shirt him. Uh, we can't afford to. Uh, we don't have the, the depth, you know, at that position. So uh, I'd like to continue to bring him along. And uh, what we're doing uh, with him, I don't think that's necessarily indicative of what he can't do. Uh, so um, we'll continue to you know, uh, give him some opportunity uh, when it's the right time and uh, trying to get him, you know, experience, confidence, uh, comfort, all of those things through getting on the field and meaningful playing, playing time. James? Hey, Brent, I had a chance to talk to Kevin recently, and he talked about some of the battles you had with him at practice and things. <laughs> he had a lot of complimentary things in it. Of course, you know, he had a pretty good offense at the time, but what do you remember about some of those battles and what do you think about what he's doing now at Tulsa offensively and what does Tulsa have offensively? I mean, the battles were what they were. Um, in the moment, it's personal. You're trying to win. Uh, at least that's the, the goal. Very competitive, you know, competitive. He's really a really smart coach and a tough guy, and uh, that's what it's about, man. Practice, uh, the practice field is how you become you know, a good player, a good unit, a good team. And uh, so uh, both of us are very passionate um, about, you know, our craft. And uh, Kevin's done a great job, you know, wherever he's been. Uh, if he's just coaching the tight ends or he's coaching the quarterbacks or uh, whether he's at Northwestern or Oklahoma or Indiana or Ohio State now at Tulsa, he's, he's always done a, a fantastic job. He's one of my favorite people that I've worked with and um, a good friend and a great dad and great husband and a, a dang good football coach. And uh, Tulsa's lucky to have him. And I see his, his players playing, you know, aggressively and, and playing confidently. Uh, even watch him going up to Washington, traveling halfway across the country. Uh, they played in a... Uh, you know, the very first third down of the game, they go first down, second down, third down, conversion. 
uh, you know, real fearless. And that's, you know, he's kind of got to go for broke uh, mindset. So uh, he'll do a great job there. And his players are, are representing him well right now. Brent, when you have a defense playing at such a high level, how do you balance wanting your defense to play with a little bit of swagger but not be overconfident? Where do you find that fine line of balance? Again, you know, just being having respect you know, for the game, and it's not all about you. And you want guys to be passionate and intense and to have fun, have enthusiasm, uh, uh, but not lose their mind or their poise. I think having poise and and uh, maturity is part of it too. Uh, don't act like a fool, you know. Uh, you know we got to actually play third down now. You know you made a tackle for loss. Congratulations, we ran you through the A gap. Nobody blocked you. Let's play. And uh, just having, you know, I think having humility and confidence can go hand in hand. And uh, and having a never satisfied mindset, but uh, the swagger and the confidence, uh, the edge, if you will, comes from. The, the work that you put in, uh, you know, countless hours of work. So you want them to have uh, all those things, but I, I, I'm a big believer in, a, you know, uh, pointing and running. When I make a play, I point to my teammates, I point to my family, I point to my coach. You know, when my teammate makes a play, a great play, man, I'm running to celebrate his success. I'm more about that than, you know, again, sometimes Again, I'm I'm assuming that, and again, I I don't mind a guy celebrating, you know, and, and you know, so I don't want to sound like you know, coach don't want to have any fun, you know. This is the no fun zone. It actually, uh, you know, and not that we are, but dominating somebody is that is fun, and um, you know, so again, I just think keeping your emotions in check and having you know poise is important. Yep. These uh, games against Tulsa, you guys have set up some series as a, a programs between the two. What value do you see in playing another in-state team playing Tulsa? And then some of these games are up there. Is there is there a different value that you ascribe to going up to Tulsa to play them? I don't know if it's a different value. Um, it's certainly a great opportunity for us to play. We, we're going to play on the road. At least we're playing in-state, so we have a lot of – uh, people that love the Sooners have an opportunity to, to watch us play. Um, I like the familiarity uh, that the players will have with one another. You know, again, half their team is from uh, the state of Oklahoma or the Dallas Metroplex, and uh, I think it's great for them in their program. Uh, we want to see everybody in state, you know, have some level of success. Uh, so it gives us both an opportunity to uh, people to you know, pitch their their flag, if you will, and uh, show their loyalty. So it's good for the pageantry of college football, you know, playing uh, each other in state and as they build their program and we're uh, building ours. I think uh, we all win, you know, through it all. Yeah, Brett, uh, Texas beat Alabama and looked good doing it. To whatever degree Texas is rising and Alabama is falling, how does that how does that affect you going forward in terms of what you got to do in the future? Well, um, I'm only kind of smirking because uh, Alabama falling, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, Texas, uh, apparently I did not see the game. Apparently they played fantastic. You don't just go into Bryant-Denny Stadium and win and not play pretty dang good. So, uh, you know, credit to them uh, for that. But I don't necessarily think that's indicative of Nebraska or uh, uh, Texas falling. Uh, or uh, Alabama falling. I don't even know what to say. That doesn't sound right. So I don't know how to say it. <laughs> My brain doesn't think like that, uh, apparently. But, uh, you know, I just say, hey, man, you know, this is the league that, you know, we signed up for. And and this is college football. But those are, you know, two, two really you know, good programs. And Alabama's been the gold standard for a long time. That doesn't mean they're they're not vulnerable to uh, you know a great game, and they came on they came up on the short side of it. You know that's the game too. I'm sure there's moments and plays you know in that game where uh, they were punished for not doing X or Y or Z the right way. And then again, this is a game of performance and guys winning their matchups. And uh, it sounds like Texas made some great plays, and 
and uh, no surprise. It was sounded like it was a great game and a uh, great venue. And uh, those are two teams right now that are, and again, early in the season, you know, playing really well. But I, I don't think it's um, indicative necessarily that uh, Alabama uh, is going to fall off the face of college football either. Not that you said that, but uh, they'll respond. I'm sure of that. George? Uh, Brent, there's a lot of metrics out there about tackling. And I, I saw one out there that was, you guys had 33 missed tackles through the first two games mm -hmm. last year. This year, you only have seven. I'm sure you guys have your own grading system. But do you feel like the tackling has been better? And what exactly goes into that? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it goes into it. And again, you know, sometimes you know, you're, you're a little more consistent tackling because maybe uh, the quality of the athletes aren't exposing you. I, I, I have, again, I just I put it all out there uh, because I, I do think that that's important. But um, uh, SMU, you know, had good skill. And uh, so give our guys some credit. I think it comes from, again, confidence and good eyes and good reaction, um, good fundamentals. Uh, you know, guys that are more knowledgeable are going to take better angles and they're going to play more aggressively and not be on their heels. So sometimes the byproduct of that is good, clean tackling, you know, techniques. And so, again, another year in the system and another year in, in all your drill work and your fundamentals. And uh, we are no different than anyone else. We work on tackling, uh, you know, practically year round. And some guys are more natural tackling. Yeah, that's a real thing. And uh, the guy just has a way of getting them down. And uh, he always hits them flush. Curtis Lofton was a guy that had very few missed tackles. Uh, a guy like Rocky Kalmus always got guys down. You know, he just hardly ever missed a tackle. So some guys, and Roe Williams, you know, it's amazing, you know, how he could hit people flush all the time, no matter what angle, what position he was coming from. Uh, and so some guys are naturally good, and so looks like you're a great tackling team, but they're just they're really good tacklers. And then you develop it too. And so I think it's a combination of a lot of things. And you know the test of a season will really tell where you're at. But again, you know my job is to recognize uh, the here and the now. You play your schedule. Uh, you correct. You teach. Uh, you develop. But you want to celebrate. You know, to and guys need to be affirmed. Uh, I think that's what continues um, the buy-in, uh, the excitement that, all right, the recognition that some of the hard work's paying off, and we're getting a little better. And uh, we got a, again a long ways to go. I I, I really mean that. And uh, but through a couple games, where our position's been pretty good. I know that you mentioned after the game he was a little bit banged up, but I know he had a brace on. I think yeah, he's still game. banged up. Yeah. All right, Ryan. You, you talked about the growth in the secondary, but how much of his reinforcement, confidence boost is it for a guy like Can I Walker for Gentry to go down and come in and play well? And then secondly, is Gentry going to be available as well this weekend? Yeah, Gentry will. And Can I? Um, he had some really good plays in the game. Uh, he's he's getting a little bit better, and excited for him. Excited for us. I made a first third down play, and his fundamentals were pretty good um, through most of the play. And we're a little bit late on the break, but um, uh, the ball, the receiver was coming back and was a little bit short of the sticks, and the quarterback threw it and uh, hit him right in the hands. And Kanai played really strong through the hands and uh, did a great job on that. So we got off the field, and then later in the game, there was a an over route. It was a a deceptive play with guys acting like he's blocking and then takes off running. They had a deep over and the quarterback put it right on the money. And can I aggressively, physically uh, strip the ball out? R great play. The positioning was fantastic. Never panicked. Didn't uh, interfere with the receiver and made a play on the on the ball. Those are really big plays when you talk about the development of that position uh, and how that should continue to carry on. Not that he's expected to be perfect, but I do believe that the experience and the confidence uh, is, a, is a real thing and expect uh, you know, him to 
really come along and and uh, that, those are some really good plays. So proud of him for that. For that. Hey, right side, second one, Justin. Hey, Brian. Jeff mentioned yesterday that uh, Gavin, somebody who he wants to get more involved. Just what are you looking for out of Gavin? Has he does get adjusted, and just what can he bring to the table for you guys? Well, again, um, talked a lot about Gavin um, in ball camp, and uh, you know he's really explosive. You know he he's wide open all the time. He's had sure hands. He dropped one over the middle. Uh, we got to have that play uh, last weekend. But uh, he's a he's a guy that you can count on, man. He's he's very invested and he cares a great deal. And he runs with great strength. Can run through trash for a smaller guy. And uh, again, he has a nice catch radius as well. So uh, between the special teams and getting him involved at receiver, I uh, would expect it to. Uh, continue to, you know, enhance his role. Brent, do you expect to have Dave McCullough back this week? Hopeful. Uh, can I also ask you about Troy? What did you think of the way he? Uh, he came in and, and did a nice game job. Game? Yeah, he he can he can play three positions, and to say he can play all three equally, I think that's not really fair he's capable of playing all three really really well but it's hard to practice them at all three positions you know in practice you know you only have so much in the tank and without you know tearing a, a guy down and taking all the reps so but you know he's he, he could he could go in there and be a starter uh and you know at any time um it's uh, he's he's done a great job since he's been here Coach, dealing with you know, a quarterback like Preston Stone last week, I mean, how does that prepare this defense for the rest of the season? Dealing with somebody that can play, make, and do things that he Yeah, can. he's, and again, you know, uh, uh, Preston's a very good player. You know, Preston, as we saw, he has tremendous accuracy, um, can throw on the run, uh, you know, really never panicked, and he's got good instincts in the pocket, you know, evaded. You know, uh, a couple of sacks, uh, a few different times, and and then he's smart. He makes good decisions. He knows when to throw it away when it's not there, and not take you know negative plays. So uh, that was a challenge, you know, for our guys. And and I thought again for that test they responded well, and that again, uh, you know, should bode well, you know, to from an experience standpoint and getting better and. Learning, uh, you know, where the air, the uh, margin for air is smaller. And uh, our guys should learn from that, get better from it. Yeah, uh, Jenny spoke into the advantages of playing in Tulsa. I wanted to talk specifically about recruiting. Um, obviously, some of the best high school football in the state played in Tulsa. Could you speak to that a little bit, just the level of high school ball that's played up there, and then the advantage of having a chance to take the team up there and play? Well, I'm not. I'm not trying to recruit for Tulsa, all right? But there's plenty to brag about. They've had a, you know, they've got a, you know, great lineage and there's been amazing football players um, that are collegiate players. Uh, the Budkus guy, the Budkus Award one was there a few years ago, right? Isn't that right? Nagurski. What was his name? He went to Denver. Yeah, is that it? Yeah. He won the Budkus or no? No. Nagurski, National Defensive Player of the Year. And um, and many others. And Garrett Mills came in here. I think caught 13 passes for 175 yards. Uh, and uh, but there's they've had a, a great lineage of players. I think maybe in the last few years they've had like five guys drafted uh, just in the last you know few years. And uh, their guys can play anywhere in the country. They're best players. And uh, the state of Oklahoma, and I've said that, said this to our staff many times. You know, the best players in this state can play anywhere in the country, and they've proven that. You know, through the years, and uh, you know, there's not great depth uh, of players, but really good football, really good coaching, really good development, excellent players, and so they'll they'll have a you know handful of them. You know, like we will, and Oklahoma State will every year. But you know, they've 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 always done a good job, and uh, you know whether they're competing for a highly recruited guy or maybe uh, an under-recruited player. And we, as we know, a, a lot of those guys make up the majority of the guys that get drafted, guys that weren't really highly thought of 
I think three stars is the uh, more more three stars drafted than they are, you know, the four and the five stars. But uh, but Tulsa has you know always done a great job of of regardless of who's been the coach there. Uh, that city, you know, has great talent there. The high schools there in that city and, and the surrounding community. So it's a, it's a great location. That's part of, uh, you know, from a success standpoint, you know, location's important. And you know, Tulsa has benefited uh, from, you know, the players in this state without without a doubt. Okay, far left, back row, John. Yeah, Brent, uh, I know you've told the story before various places, but if you could recap, maybe you have a different perspective now that Kevin's the head coach on the other sideline. 2008, the uh, implementation of the hurry-up offense, he was kind of one of the innovators of what we're seeing nationwide now. Can you kind of recount that? And I, I understand you were involved in the approval or, or <laughs> declining of what Not much. Yeah, yeah. I just happened to be um, in the general area code. Uh, but, um, no, you know, Kevin had background at you know, Northwestern with Randy Walker and all the success, if we remember, you know, that was always a feel good story. Uh, you know, the David versus Goliath, it seemed like every time Northwestern was playing, they were, they were taking somebody to the wire or beating, you know, one of the uh, blue bloods of college football. So he has a, a great lineage and uh, a great experience. Uh, somebody that was never afraid to try something new. And, uh, but uh, he and Coach Stoops and the other offensive coaches, um, you know, decided, hey, look, some of these people are doing a few of these fastball plays. You had a package of two or three fastball plays. You'd put three people into the boundary and you'd run a toss sweep and then maybe you'd run a fake toss and a double post wheel and maybe you'd throw a fade route or a slant or something to the, to the field. And uh, you know a fastball package, so you got a fastball defense. You know, well they took it to another level, and it wasn't a bunch of quick short throws. They, I remember specifically, Coach Stoops says you need to go fast and run four verticals, because that really wasn't a popular thing to do. And uh, so it. And again, then they, I think they used the personnel and created all kinds of different for formations out of the same personnel grouping and really put defenses, you know, on their heels and couldn't do your sub packages and things of that nature. So at the time, you know, it was a really uh, big time challenge. And then you add to it the quality of the players that were involved, uh, the accuracy of you know, Sam Bradford and the weapons that he had on offense and their skill, whether it was Jermaine, uh, you know, DeMarco, all these, he had playmakers everywhere. And, uh, but there was also, you know, great detail and precision and a lot of thought that was put into how we do what we do. And um, I was just glad they were on our team. And, uh, but it was a lot of fun to watch, you know, that maturation and, uh, in some ways, evolution. Not a, again, there's been tempo and no huddle for a very long time, well before then. But uh, in, the, in the college football game with what we were doing and the personnel that we were doing it with and the variety of the things, it wasn't just the run and shoot. It was they getting high backs with the same personnel and then they can get an empty and just blister you with whatever they were doing. Quick follow mm -hmm. The coaches on that team, the coordinators on those early Oklahoma teams, a lot of them went on to be head coaches. Kevin was obviously one of them. But just the quality that, that Bob of guys that Bob hired going on to become head coaches. Yeah. What's your perspective on that? Well, I mean, Coach Stoops always had a way of attracting good players. Um, would always get the best out of people. And, um, and then also good coaches. He's a winner. I remember Coach Snyder asking me just it was a very you know for me I, I've, I've said it before and it's really this isn't about that but I really struggled with do I leave home in Kansas State or I'd go to Oklahoma so with all the emotional attachments and uh, the f feeling you know indebted to coach Snyder my opportunity there and, and what have you the flip side was well that's coach Stoops 
and uh, I love playing for him as a as a player, and love working and learning from him as a defensive uh, mentor. And so when Coach Snyder says, "Well," Once I told him I'm, I'm going to go to Oklahoma, he said, well, how do you know they're going to win? Because Oklahoma had gone several years without winning. And I was like, well, that's Bob Stoops, and he's a winner. And so I say that he attracts great coaches, and but he also has the instincts for it too. And uh, But, you know, several of the coaches, you know, systematically have been able to um, – I don't know if parlay is the right word or not, but – through their experiences here um, and the success that we had, obviously opportunities will uh, arise, you know, through that that process. Mm -hmm. Time for a couple more. Way back, TJ. Yeah, coach. Kind of in that same vein, talking with Coach Wilson, he weaves OU stories in and out of his press conferences when talking about his team at Tulsa. Curious, you've hit on it a little bit today, but maybe any other stories from your time with Coach Wilson that stand out to you? Is this uh, is this PG thirteen? <laughs> no, I don't. We had a lot of good times. Uh, a lot of good times. Our families, our kids, growing up. That's the coaching profession, and uh, this is a wonderful community to raise your families. And uh, I know it was really hard. You know, different coaches taking different opportunities. I don't think any of those opportunities, whether it was. Chuck Long going to San Diego State, or Mike going to Arizona, or Mangino going to Kansas, or you know Kevin leaving to go to Indiana, Jay Norvell leaving. I mean, I don't think any of that was probably easy for anybody. Uh, but just a lot of great memories uh, on and off the field. It was genuine. Uh, the coaches um, that were a part of Bob Stoops' staff uh, because of his leadership, he nurtured family and relationships and it's all of us together you know coach stoops is one of the most humble human beings you know on this planet that's the facts and you know the byproduct of that is just a a, a wonderful connected environment that everybody in their families benefited from and i think you could be you know i think people felt free to to um in the from the coaching side to to do their thing if you will and be successful you know as a as a result. Hey, Brent, in addition to you know, talking a lot about Kevin Wilson, but you know, Dominique Franks is also on the, the Tulsa staff as a as an analyst, as a defensive analyst. Maybe just what do you remember from his time at, at OU and Dom? what's your yeah, what's your relationship with him like? You know, um, Dom's uh, was a fantastic player, super, super instinctive. He was a ball junk. He loved the game. Uh, great acceleration. Just natural. The game was very easy for him. Quiet, uh, but played loud. Um, I've had stayed in touch with Dom. We tried to uh, hire him in an analyst role. Uh, there was a few different things we were having to work through at the time. It didn't work out for him on on his uh, part and uh, and our part too. There was uh, he was working at a high school and. And that high school is pretty good, and so when you hire somebody uh, from a high school, then uh, you can't recruit their program uh, for a couple of years. That's an NCAA rule, so that made it hard. And so he's not coaching there anymore. But uh, he's, you know, he's a natural. You know, he loves the game. He's great, great around people. A really good communicator. It's no um, wonder. Uh, you know, to me whatsoever that he's had great success as a coach, as a mentor. He's always been about the right stuff. And so excited for his, you know, future. You got a bright one. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Coach. All right. Y'all have a great day.